Greetings to you all. Most medical curricula are overloaded with information. Podcasting can greatly assist your students to cope with this load. We describe our podcasting system and offer some suggestions for alternatives that you might want to consider if you are going to implement podcasting at your institution. We make use of enhanced podcasts which consist of the combination of the lecturer's voice and whatever they display on the computer screen to be projected to the class over a data projector. This is usually a lecture with the accompanying PowerPoint slides, but it could be anything displayed on a computer screen along with the lecturer's explanation. The components we used for podcasting were the following. Firstly, that each lecture hall was correctly configured with the required software and connected to the network. Secondly, that we had TechSmith Relay installed on the server and correctly configured. Thirdly, that there was an individual responsible for doing some post-processing editing. And then fourthly, we set up a content management system to store all the podcasts on. Each lecture hall needed to have a computer, a wireless lapel microphone, with amplifier and a data projector. We made sure that each lecture hall PC was connected to the network and had a copy of TechSmith Relay Client installed. This software captures the PC screen and the lecturer's voice. Lecturers generally use a wireless lapel microphone which fed the audio into an amplifier. We made sure that the PC received an audio feed from the amplifier. The contents of the PC's screen were displayed on a data projector, but this is not necessarily part of the system. We trained groups of students in each class to do the recordings, rather than attempting to train the lecturers as there could be up to 50 lecturers in a particular block. The students started the recording and stopped it once the lecture was over. The software automatically submitted the lecturer's audio and the screen capture to the relay server for processing. The server's task is to combine the screen capture and audio elements into an enhanced podcast. This is also sometimes called a screencast or vidcast or sometimes just video. We used TechSmith Relay which requires its own server. Relay can produce podcasts in a wide variety of formats such as WMV, AVI, M4B and others. We used the MP4 file output as this is compatible with most browsers and can be viewed on Windows, Apple and Android devices. Once the server was finished producing the podcast, it notified you so you could retrieve the files. Each lecture was usually between 40 to 45 minutes and the podcasts were encoded as mp4 files as I mentioned before. We made the pixel dimensions 800 by 600 with an audio sampling of 44 kilohertz. Typically this produced a podcast which was 50 to 80 megabytes in size which was similar to podcasts of equal length found on YouTube, TED 
and other podcast websites. The podcasts usually require some cleaning up, such as removing noise at the beginning and end of the lecture, and adding a title and copyright notice to the podcast. We used Camtasia Studio to do this, which is also a TechSmith product. After the post-server editing, the podcast was uploaded to a special website for students to view or download. We used the free DNN platform as the basis for our website. DNN platform is a content management system. A content management system should not be confused with a learning management system. The main function of a content management system is to categorize and deliver lots of files easily. Once the final editing of the podcasts is complete, they were placed onto the content management system in specific categories that make sense for the students. We categorized the podcasts by study year and organ system. Currently, we have over 3,500 lectures and clinical tutorials on the website. Students have to log in and are then able to view or download as many podcasted lectures or clinical tutorials as they like. Students could be situated either on or off campus. This is an example of what the student sees when they log into the website. There is a tree view navigation control down the left hand side of the screen. This student has selected a podcast from the Neurosciences block in 2013. There is a search function which allows the student to easily find a podcast and a download link to enable the student to download the file. The tree view categorization is provided by a special extension to the DNN platform called Gallery Server Pro and had to be purchased separately. The content management system has many more functions that could benefit students besides housing podcasts. For instance, it could act as a repository for all their printed material and internet links. This is an IT intensive project and requires competent people to update the content management system as well as to maintain the network and server infrastructure. If this is not available in your environment, you could consider alternatives. An extremely simple and low cost alternative is to use the audio recording function built into PowerPoint 2010 or 2013. Once you have inserted narration or audio into PowerPoint, you can save the slideshow as a video. You can also use free podcasting software such as Cam Studio or Screencast-O-Matic. If you don't have the necessary skills in-house, but need to have a larger footprint for your podcast project, you can always opt to run everything in the cloud using something like Google's Course Builder, Amazon's Web Services, Microsoft Hosting, or if you are a Mac user, iTunes U. These are some of the big players, but there are sure to be others offering cloud hosting in your country or region. We have recorded the entire undergraduate medical curriculum's lectures. Our students use the podcasts for revision before tests, 
to understand difficult concepts not fully grasped in class, to catch up on missed lectures, and for mobile learning. A particularly interesting quote is the following. I think the one advantage is that I hadn't in a really long time since high school really used auditory input as a way of learning. I'd been using basically visual input for five years and then all of a sudden I was doing visual and auditory and it's like a part of my brain maybe just lit up and it was like oh that's what I'm missing out on. Your students could also benefit enormously from having access to podcasts of their lectures. So, if you would like to implement your own podcasting system, we would be very happy to share our experience and expertise and assist you in any way we can.